Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the directional derivative. If we're given a function z equals f of x and y, let's just work out with a function of two variables, and a unit vector, which we'll write as nu hat of theta, which is cosine of theta i hat plus sine of theta j hat, we define partial f, partial nu theta hat, the directional derivative in the direction of theta at a point a, b, to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h cosine theta, b plus h sine theta, minus f of a, b, all divided by h. And so one important thing to note is that this generalizes partial derivatives. So for example, if theta was equal to 0, then this nu hat of theta is going to turn into i hat. Nu hat of theta is just going to be i hat. And what this formula will turn into is this says that the limit, this directional derivative, then partial f partial nu with 0 as your angle at a point a, b, is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h b minus f of a b over h, which is exactly equal to partial f partial x at a point a, b. So when theta is equal to 0, you get the x partial derivative. We can also see what happens when theta is equal to pi over 2. So when theta is equal to pi over 2, then your new hat of theta will be equal to j hat. And then partial f, by a similar calculation, partial f partial nu pi over 2 at a point a, b will be equal to partial f partial y at the point a, b. Now, for a general angle, an angle between 0 and pi over 2, what will we get? Well, let's think about this. What we're doing is, so this, of course, this partial f partial x at a, b, is telling you how much the function is changing in this direction. That would be the partial f partial x, if that's my point a, b. That's my x-axis, my y-axis. And then partial f partial y is telling you how much you change in this direction at the point a, b. And so now, this, this directional derivative is telling us information about how the function is changing with respect to any angle. So if I look at a point a, b in space, x-axis, y-axis, and I'm at a point a, b, what I do at this point AB is I draw a little coordinate axis over here, and then I find an angle theta, and I want to know the rate of change in that direction. So of course, just this horizontal direction will be the x partial derivative, this vertical direction will be the y partial derivative, but I can find the rate of change in any direction using this formula. Now by the chain rule, the chain rule implies that partial f partial nu theta hat at a, b is partial f partial x at a, b times the cosine of theta plus partial f partial y at a, b times the sine of theta. Or we can write this as the gradient of f at a, b dot the vector nu hat of theta. And that's typically how we compute these directional derivatives. So for example, if I looked at f of x, y, which was x times y, and theta was pi over 4, and we picked the point a, b to be 1, 2, we can compute the gradient of this vector. So the gradient of f will be y comma x. So we'll do y comma x, so in other words, partial f partial nu pi over 4 at the point 1, 2 will be y is equal to 2, x is equal to 1, and we'll dot that with the cosine of pi over 4, the sine of pi over 4. Each of those are equal to 1 over root 2. So our final answer for this would be 2 times 1 over root 2 plus 1 times 1 over root 2. So we get a total of 3 
over the square root of two is our directional derivative. So this directional derivative can be computed using this formula over here. And it's really just the gradient of f at the point dot the vector in question. And this tells us the rate of change of the function in any direction. Thank you very much.